In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own smart shapes. And we're going to do something a little bit more advanced with that, those. So let's get started. So here's the scenario. I'm building a course. The course uh, owner, the stakeholder, if you will, wants me to show an image of an airplane. And I don't have a picture of an airplane that I personally own. They don't have a picture of an airplane that they personally own. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copyrighted image and use it as a guide to create my own smart shape. In other words, I will be creating a new airplane, but using this as a guide. I'm not going to use this image, um, which incidentally is a copyrighted image, but I'm the copyright holder. So I could, in theory, use this image. But let's say I don't have this image, but I, I've got, I found this on the internet, and I'm going to use it as a guide to create my own smart shape, which is a lot of fun as well. So what we need to do, obviously, when you click on the Smart Shapes drop-down box, or button, if you will, you can see that the choices are fairly limited. I don't really have a lot. I can do, um, I can create my own polygon shape by using the uh, the draw tool here. Uh, I can draw a series of lines and then maybe group them together. Um, but I really don't have a lot here to work from. So how will I do this? Well, one of the things that Adobe Captivate allows you to do is to edit um, a smart shape. And let me show you how that's done. I'm going to start off, I'm just going to do the body of the aircraft right here. So let me select, um, you know, this rounded rectangle. And we'll start with this here. And I'm just going to draw approximately the size of the body of the aircraft. Now, to make this easier, I'm just going to zoom in to the view a little tighter. We'll say about 200% here. And I'm also going to make this a little bit transparent and the reason I'm doing is not because I want a transparent airplane but rather it'll allow me to see what's in the background a little bit easier so I'm just gonna make it half transparent so what I need to do now is right click on this object and you'll see you'll see that there's a convert to freeform option and if I select that I suddenly have all these dots, these black dots around the outside that define the shape of this particular smart object. Now let's just try something here. We're going to drag one of these dots over here. In fact, we'll try to line it up with the airplane as best as we can. You see, that's now distorted the shape. It's no longer this rounded corner rectangle, but rather this completely undescribable shape that I have before me here. So I'm going to try my best to move these dots into spots on the background here to be close to what I'm trying to achieve here. And I'm having some success, but I wouldn't say it's a great deal of success. Let's move this over to here. And this one over to here, you know, and, it, and because you're you're not worried about how maybe accurate this particular image is, you don't need to worry too much, especially about some of the detail here. So I kind of get the basic shape here, but you see, I'm missing some parts here. Well, let's click on one of these buttons, and you'll notice if you look closely, you'll see that there are two green lines that extend from that black dot, that selection handle, if you will. Well, I want you to try this for yourself. I want you to take those green lines and using the red selection handles at the end of them to change them, to just move them. You'll see what's happening is that the, the black dot is still my anchor point for that, but now I'm stretching the line that extends from that black dot. So I can actually play around with this. The shorter I make it, the less effect it has. 
and then the direction I pointed it in, pointed it in? The, the direction I pointed in will determine the curve. So if I'm trying to get this as close to the curve of the airplane as possible, I can kind of play around with that a little bit. So that's not bad there. And let's bring this guy nice and long because we want the curve, well, let's pull it back a bit. We want the curve just to be at the front here. So that's not bad. It's a little wonky. But we can, and again, you may have to click the edit points from the right click of the object menu. So let's move this here. We'll just, again, play with these these red selection handles on the green lines to get them close to the shape that you're actually looking for. Uh, same thing here, we'll move this a little bit and yeah, just play with this a little bit. This for, for you Photoshop guys out there, this will probably seem much more familiar. I'm going to straighten this one out here. Okay, it doesn't have to be entirely perfect. Um, in this case here, I'm going to try to straighten this guy out a bit. But, you know, if you're in the basic ballpark, only, uh, you know, a designer from Boeing will probably spot that you're a little off here. Let's move this one down a bit. So I'm fairly happy with that. If we turn, turn the opacity back to uh, 100% and then just go best fit, you can see I'm pretty close to that shape. And of course I would repeat this process a bunch of different times. And of course one of the things I can now do is I could select the color of the actual object that I'm trying to capture here. And actually this is going to be maybe interesting if I was to choose a gradient effect, not orange, but uh, you know we could select, let's choose something a little bit more contrasting here. Let's do something interesting. with maybe the style of gradient. That could lead to something interesting. You know, so we could uh, choose something darker there and maybe choose something lighter around the outside. You know, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I'll just go with one of the more natural uh, gradients there. And of course you could add all the different effects that you want to create the effect that you're looking for. And, uh, you know, so there's our body of the airplane. And let's just do, as another example, just to show you what's possible, let's do uh, the engines. And of course, uh, we're going to choose maybe an oval shape here. And we'll just go approximately what, what I think it might be. So there we go. Again, I'm going to make it a little bit transparent so I can see the background that I'm working with. I'm going to go about 200 here. And let's right click on this and convert to free form. And I'm going to grab this bottom button here and just stretch it out a little bit. Again, I don't have to be 100% accurate, but if I get the general shape of what an airplane engine is, that's not bad. That one's pretty easy to do. Let's, uh, let's uh, also choose a, a gradient for this one here. And we'll maybe do, let's bring this up to 100%. That is actually kind of interesting right there. And what we need, of course, as well is, uh, let's make it a little bit transparent still for now. We need another shape to create 
and we'll just make that black. And so now if we combine these two, 100%, we kind of have, you know, and you could spend a little bit more time finessing this. I'm going to group this together so that I can actually duplicate it. And we'll use it for the other engine as well. You know, and obviously this doesn't match. So let me ungroup that. And I'll just move the engine hole. I don't know if that's the right term uh, or not. But let's just right click again, edit the points. And I'll just move this one over this way a little bit. And we'll just change the shape and move this guy over a little bit. So again, just playing with the red selection handles will allow you to change the overall shape of that point and what happens around that point. So that's pretty close. Again, you know, I, I would spend a little bit more time finessing with this. But, you know, you can, oops, you can group this together now. And let's just pull back and take a look there. So we have our, our body, two engines. Let's, let's see if we can pull off a couple of wings here as well. Now, uh, the order that you do these things is important because obviously the body of the airplane, I'd want that to be, I, I might be able to draw a single wing behind the body and you wouldn't know that, that it, they are actually separate wings but obviously I need the engines in front so it's really important to keep track of that you may want to do the background stuff first and work your way towards the front depending on what it is so I'm going to do something real simple I'm going to do um, let's try using a trapezoid as my starting shape and I'm just going to do something really wide right here that's almost the shape I need for that back wing again we'll uh, go about 200 percent so I can see that nice and close and I'm just going to make this again about half transparent so I can see what I'm working with here let's convert that to free form and uh, let's see what we can do here now if we want we just move this and let's say have this form a different shape here So you can, you can really actually come pretty close to creating almost any shape, I would say, just by using the, the green lines with their selection handles. And just move that. Again, it's almost like tracing. You're just taking the image, you're tracing it. I'm going to make this a solid dark gray. And we're going to make it 100%. And we're just going to... Um, well, we want to use maybe the alignment toolbar so that let's just make this best fit here. Now we're just going to have, we'll move the whole body to the front. So let's just take a look here. And, um, I'm just going to delete the background. So we have something already there. It's starting to take shape. We'll do something similar with this. I won't put the detail in with all the flaps and the, the landing gear, but let's do a similar shape. We'll use that trapezoid shape again, because I think that worked quite well. And you may want to do each wing separately, but I'm just going to try to cheat here. And see if I can do one wing in one shot here using a single trapezoid. Uh, again, I'm going to use my trick of making it half transparent. And we'll right click. And actually, before I do anything else here, um, let's just 
select this guy and bring him right to the front and we'll select the engine and bring that right to the front and this engine as well right to the front so now we can work with this and see what we're working with as we do it um, I'm going to simplify this wing a little bit here to create uh, more of the effect that I'm I'm really looking for here so let's convert this to free form and I'll zoom in so in fact I might go more than 200 well uh, 200 seems to be okay so I'm gonna put this selection right there and I'm gonna put the other one just where it seems to occur there so that kind of works now let's play with again those green selections and see if we can create well that's pretty close already and we'll do the same thing for ah it's behind the uh, engine here so let's actually go to our timeline here and we'll just make the engine invisible for right now so let's go back and select <clears throat> edit points and I think I'll just drag this down maybe something like that I'm not sure if that's right or not but and we'll do the same to this side here and I'm gonna do the same as well make that just temporarily not visible Yeah, we'll just uh, again play with our green lines here a bit. I'm no aircraft expert, but uh, let's hope that my audience isn't either. <laughs> uh, so that looks pretty much like I'm heading in the right direction there. I'm sure it's far from perfect, but let's just make that 100% full filled sorry not full and uh, you know it will use whatever the same color is that I used for the background here and let's go best fit and we'll just take this image and we'll make that we'll get rid of that and we'll just bring back our two engines there so you know not perfect by any stretch of the imagination um, but, you know, with a little bit of an extra finesse, you could probably come up with, um, you know, a much, much better image than I've created here. It's like you're creating your own clip art in a way. If I group this all together, then I can, of course, then select it as one and just resize it. Obviously, you might want to hold down the shift key to prevent it from, uh, from resizing wrong, but, uh, you know, that that pretty much works quite well you can see the the airplane and obviously you'd want to play with some of those those lines a little bit but just uh, quickly off the top of my head able to create something that would certainly be suitable for a lot of people's needs guys if you like the videos that I'm producing please subscribe to my channel also if you thought this video was particularly interesting or at the very least entertaining I'd appreciate a thumbs up.